Hey y'all, welcome back to the journey. So I got here to the property. I'm actually waiting on Shane uh, today to let us know exactly where we can put the pole. We're actually trying for like right in this area here, which is right across from the RV. You will <laughs> back on a different day and then that's also going to be uh, close to where you know we're going to be doing the cabin back up in there so i don't know if you can see the white is like right here there's some white uh ribbon and stuff in there where we kind of have it roughly marked out and I get here, obviously you can see it's overcast. It's not a very good day for working, which I may or may not try to get something done today. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. It, it's probably not gonna be clearing more land or anything like that. I, I'm not truly gonna worry about that so much. That's more gonna be mom and dad. I have other projects I need to take care of way over yonder and it's just one of the things that I, I wanted to show you uh, here, and this, this is something that really, really, really gets on my nerves, and it really pisses me off. And the one thing about the state of Arkansas is that it's a no-leash law uh, for animals, for domesticated animals, right, dogs and stuff like that. They're allowed to, to roam free, and it irritates me. This is why. So dogs, especially male dogs, like to go around and mark their stuff, right? And whenever they're marking, they also come in. I, I, I came in and I also saw scratch marks, right? You can see all the scratch marks and stuff like that because they're over here. They're marking territory, right? But that's not really what pisses me off either. Well, it does, but they do stuff like this. That's on my steps to my back door. Are you freaking kidding me? No, that is not all right. I'm not happy. So I've already told Gladys, you know, if a dog comes onto someone else's property and that, that's one of the things here, right? Is if a dog, your dog, you can't control your dog from leaving your property and that dog comes to my property, I can claim it as mine. I can basically take the dog, right? Do whatever I want with it. Or I can shoot it and you'll never see the dog again, right? So I've already got several, several, you know, on, on film of different dogs. And I already know two of them live directly across the street from me you know, of neighbors there. All the rest of them are either further up the road in both directions, but I have video evidence of these dogs being on our property. I don't know exactly which one did that because right now the camera wasn't turned on because I had the memory card at home. I need to get more memory cards. That way I can constantly take one out, put one in. Ah. I'm this close. I don't want to have to shoot someone's dog. I don't. I really don't. But this keeps happening. I'm sorry if you don't like that, but I'm going to take care of some dogs. All right. Boom. Just like that. We got uh, Shane came and went. 
and we were able to to mark out you know where i wanted to put the the service pole so utilizing the <laughs> arrow an old arrow that i had found but boom it's going to go right there and it's going to connect to that pole right there but unfortunately since we don't have the the cabin uh, the foundation of that built yet this connection we're going to have to uh, pay for the one back there right the, there that transformer for the well that one will be free so which pole do we put in first i don't know so i'm gonna let uh, gladys decide on that one or we can uh, talk it out <laughs> and see what we want to do but uh, this one for getting this connected wasn't necessarily in the budget and uh it's not super super cheap but i don't know we'll get it figured out though so stick around all right so gladys and family are on their way oh i tried giving her a call but they, they get to doing this or being too busy that she doesn't want to pick her phone. <laughs> but I think instead of working on a project way over yonder today, I really need to get working on this. The tent for the laundry room slash storage. Because like I said, this is a very important building or a very important location. Because this is where mom and dad will be putting a lot of their stuff when they come next time for real reels. Plus, I'd like to get that pole put in place. And that's going inside the tent for the laundry room. That's washer and dryer along with the power to the RV. And then this pole, I need to get the, the wire put in place for that. And then get that put in place for service pole. And then we're going to go ahead and, and start getting the other stuff that we need for the other pole. Because like I said, um, well, Shane, I said, he, it doesn't matter if they have to come out once or come out twice. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the same price regardless. That one up there is free. This one up here is not to get it connected only because... We don't have a foundation, even though there's foundation on site, we're doing two poles. So that one we don't have to pay for, this one we do. So it's unfortunate, but that's how the cookie crumbles. But all right, I need to get, once uh, the family gets here, I'm gonna head up to the front of the property, go grab the tent, that way I can go ahead and start getting that put up, get it installed. And then from there, once the tent, eh, I can't speak, once the tent is in place, from there, I'll start working on the foundation, getting the, the drainage put in for the washing machine, and getting the power pole installed where I want that to go. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's get busy. And boom, just like that, the tent is done. And you miss all of it. <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. Uh, actually, if you want to see how one man or one person puts together a 10 by 17 portable garage from Harbor Freight, make sure your notifications are turned on and that you're following the journey because this is going to be posted up come Wednesday, 3 p.m. So make sure you're... Whew, I'm tired. I just got done moving the service pole, but anyway, now I'm actually going to be getting to work. I just want to let you guys know that that's coming. How to put it together one man. All right, back to work. All right. I was able to get the, the service pole up here onto the, the horses. Dad's all on the other side of the property. He's actually looking at our other generator that I can't get started. So while he's working on that, I'm going to start getting the, the wire put into the panel because 
like I said, I contacted Shane. He let me know that the service wire bundle that I bought is good to use. That it can be the, the 404020, 20 being the neutral, 40s being the hot, hot. So let's get this thing wired up. All right, story of my life. I can't find a tool that I need for, to actually cut the wire. So I'm either going to have to wait for Gladys to come to where she I can borrow uh, the bolt cutters I need for cutting the wire. Because it, it's a 4 aught aluminum wire. I mean, it's the size of a nickel. So the cutters I have, I can't find them. Like I said, we're still living out of boxes here. And stuff is just kind of thrown around. So until I either go one, buy the tool or borrow the tool, I'm going to go ahead and shift over to digging the hole because I can do that now. I have the tool for that now. And then I'm going to wait on the wire. So let's go dig a hole instead. if you could notice on the time lapse but started getting some really muddy stuff out because as you can see water <laughs> water water so so at this point let's go ahead and see how deep we are and then we'll go from there i need to be four feet all right about two feet five inches i'm gonna need to make a much bigger hole here at the top so we'll get the angle because uh, when you're trying to spread out your uh, post hole diggers they don't want to spread because it hits the top of the hole so I need to be roughly There, <laughs> almost the whole length of my post hole digger. But, well, here you go. There's the hole. I got about another foot to go. I mean, you can kind of see, like, the size rocks that we're pulling out of this thing. But it keeps filling up with water. You can see I broke out the sump pump to kind of combat that. Got a landscaping bar, post hole diggers, and shovel. Just to try to get this hole dug. Man, what a workout. Whew.
All right, the hole is now dug and it's gonna continue to fill up with water, but I got it down to the four foot mark. And you can see just all these big rocks, big rocks, all the stuff that's getting in my way, but we got it, I got it. All right, so up next, I need to get my wire into the panel. So I need to go from my main breaker to my meter and then from the meter out the weather head and of course my GoPro is dead even though I had it charging all last night and my phone is on charge but that will be over there so you're not going to be able to see like up close and personal me doing this so I'm just going to throw you guys to a time lapse as I get this uh, knocked out alright so let's go So we finally got that in there and now I need to put the the weather head on and then once I'm done with the weather head I can measure because I need at least two feet sticking out and I cut it and then done and put it in the hole. Oh.
I've never used that. I've never used it. I didn't know she was going to get an electric on that. That has to hook up to a battery. Alright, so I got it all put together. Now there's just one thing left to do, and that's to get it in the hole. So, let's go do that. Top, you want the bottom? Alright, we'll get it in the hole, and then we can get it turned around. Let's go get some braces so I can get a level and then start putting the dirt back in. Oh, all right, so there we go. We got the pole into its foundation, got it uh, braced in. We want to put in rocks down at the very bottom for a little bit, but I need to get another little like tamper that I can uh, be able to tamp the dirt as we're putting it in. But yeah, you gotta I'm gonna go ahead and call this one done. So other than power company coming, connecting it up, getting a transformer installed. So once I get the ground rod, obviously I, I have to put the ground rod in. I still have the, the little copper line at the bottom. So once the ground rod is in, all the dirt and stuff is in and it's all ready to go. All they have to do is come connect it and then I'll give them a call. Get on the schedule and then we'll have power for the RV temporarily because <laughs> I still have to route. Uh, well, at least we'll have power here to be able to run extension cords and stuff. For the RV, I will need to run another line over to that pole that I have to put into the tent. But we'll do that for another day. So definitely appreciate y'all. Last but not least, remember, always thank a veteran at every chance you get. Not only on Veterans Day, and we'll see you on the next one. Later, y'all.